I've always been fascinated by science fiction. When I was a kid, I used to dream about going to Dagobah and training to be a Jedi with Master Yoda, or joining Captain Picard on the Starship Enterprise and setting off across the galaxy to explore. I love science fiction that inspires us to dream bigger, to think bigger, that asks us what our future will be like, good or bad. And I also love sci-fi that asks what aliens might be like. Now, I never got a chance to become a Jedi <laughs> yet, and I have not gone into space yet. But my love for science fiction and these questions, what are aliens like, are they out there, in part, that led me into my career in astrobiology, our quest to understand the nature of life, to ask those questions like, what is life? Are we alone? Is there anything else out there in the universe for us to know about? And these are grand questions in the, the journey of human civilization. I'm very blessed in that I get to host a show for the NASA Astrobiology Program called Ask an Astrobiologist where I speak to other astrobiologists, other researchers in this realm, about their lives and their interests and their research. And they're all really interested in whether or not we can find aliens. And they're also all really interesting people. Right now, around the world, astrobiologists are working together to solve questions like, how did life first come to our planet? What were the necessary steps in chemistry and physics to bring us from basic chemistry, the early building blocks, up to biology, to life as we know it? Did life start on Earth, or did it come here from somewhere else? We don't really know yet. Astrobiologists are exploring around our planet to better understand how life and the environment interact, how different organisms have made a living in different ways, have formed ways to move, to get food, to mate and reproduce. And now, in the last century, we've started learning more about our own place in the universe by actually leaving our home planet. We're sending spacecraft out to worlds like Venus and Mars and moons like Enceladus and Europa. Right now, NASA has two active rovers on the surface of Mars, Curiosity and Perseverance, that are trying to understand past environments for life and even look for signs of life. And soon, we're launching the Europa Clipper mission, which will go to Europa, which has an ocean under its icy crust that has more water than all the water on the Earth. But maybe there's no other life in our solar system. It's quite possible. Now we know of over 5,000 worlds around other stars. These exoplanets have opened up a whole new realm of exploration, a way for us to try to understand whether or not we can look at the atmospheric chemistry of these worlds and look for possible signs of biology and maybe even technology. It really feels like those dreams of science fiction are becoming a reality. We're doing so much cool stuff together right now as humans. But as I'm going to argue right now, one of the best things about astrobiology for me and this search for extraterrestrial life, it's not just about finding aliens, it's also about making us better people. And we really need some of that right now in the scope of human history. We have come so very far as a civilization. From using energy from fire to steam to combustion to nuclear energy to renewable energy resources, connecting our entire species across the globe through the internet and digital communications, we've had advancements in medicine and transportation. We now have artificial intelligence. We've sent humans into space. But all of these advances have come with cost. Since the year 2000, the mass fraction of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has increased by over 50 parts per million. People have been predicting climate change for over a century, and it's here and now, and it's not going to go away. We certainly are leaving our fingerprint on the planet in the things that we do and the ways we behave. On top of all that, right now, we have fellow humans around the world who are still facing food and water insecurity. There are people who live in conflict zones where they are still condemned to great struggle and loss in their lives. And our species is still poised on the brink of nuclear warfare, self-destruction that we brought upon our own species. We are at a very critical moment in human history. We have now weighed the balance. On one side, we have great potential. On the other side, we have great risk. So how could looking for aliens help in any of that? Well, first off, looking for aliens makes us think bigger. 
We are one species of many different species across this one little planet in our solar system, in a galaxy full of hundreds of billions of other star systems. And our galaxy is one of just a great, very many. That's a lot of potential for possible other things out there in the cosmos. Our lives are just one small etching in the long tapestry of existence in the cosmos. But we've made our story significant through what we've achieved together. But if we really want this story to continue, we have to think bigger. We have to act bigger. And in some ways, thinking about aliens can help us do that. The thinkers, the dreamers, the doers, the actors of our entire civilization's history have always been inspired by storytelling, by science fiction. And now we have science, the power, the tools of science to help guide us and maybe even possible extraterrestrial life. So would it be good or bad to find an advanced civilization out there? I don't know, but we should be prepared. Also, perhaps aliens have figured out some way to survive these existential crises we've faced. Maybe they've solved climate crises. Maybe they've solved industrial pollution. Maybe they've figured out how to not kill themselves. Maybe they've figured out how to get their leaders to get up and just do something for once. Maybe they figured it out. But there's something else about astrobiology and the search for extraterrestrial life that really inspires me too. And that's that it has the potential to make us better here and now. The astronaut Edgar Mitchell, upon seeing the Earth in the vantage point of the moon, he remarked that you develop an instant global consciousness when you see this. You develop a people orientation, an intense dissatisfaction with the state of the world and a compulsion to do something about it. That's something we need. Maybe a bit more grounded, Anusha Ansari, the first female private space explorer, she remarked that after coming back from space, she was no longer bothered by being stuck in traffic or being late for a meeting. We could use that too. My friend Frank White in 1987 coined the term the overview effect to suggest this psychological shift that might be happening to astronauts when they see our world from the outside. They see it as small and fragile and interconnected and it makes them want to do something to make things better. And as I argue, I think astrobiology and the search for extraterrestrial life, just the sheer act of thinking about what's possible could also be an overview effect. My friend and colleague Mike Toyon and I we're sitting down just recently trying to figure out what we call this different effect. Instead of looking down at the Earth, we're looking out into the cosmos. And we came up with this, the Panzoic effect. The way that thinking about the possibility for life everywhere out there impacts us and makes us realize that maybe we aren't alone. Maybe it brings us some awe. Dr. Keltner, in his book on the science of awe, relays a bunch of research studies showing how awe changes our lives, it shifts our perspectives, it brings more empathy for us, it makes us better people. Experiences and wonder and awe have the ability to change who we are and make us want to act for each other here and now. I think often of that young version of myself looking up at the heavens at night, dreaming about cavorting across the galaxy on the Enterprise, looking for new life and new civilizations. He also had a lot of hope for our future, and I'm willing to bet he wasn't alone. Science fiction, which, you know, is dreams, but also allows us to explore in the science of astrobiology, it has the potential to make us better people. It reminds us that there's a bigger picture and more possibility out there for us to explore. The search for extraterrestrial life in many ways is also a search for our own lives and trying to understand where we are in all of this and what are our responsibilities to each other. And I think that's something that we all need right now. Thank you.